Hey, what's up everyone? It's Nicole and in today's video I wanted to do another little movie review and the movie that I wanted to talk about today is Marabone or The Secret of Marabone as it's also known and it is a movie that came out in 2017 and it's written and directed by Sergio G. Sanchez who if you don't know is the also the person who wrote The Orphanage which is another very good movie. I highly recommend it. This movie also stars Anna Taylor-Joy, George McKay, Charlie Heaton, and Mia Goth. So again, a really good cast in it. But yeah, so this movie took me, I mean, I've heard of this movie for about a year. Even though I know it came out in 2017, I had never heard about it in 2017. I only saw it when I was browsing randomly one day on Hulu for a movie to watch, and I saw it there, and I read the synopsis, watched the trailer, and I thought, hmm, that movie, you know, looks pretty good and I kind of just added it to my list of movies to watch and it took me legit like almost a whole year to finally get to watching it because I'm really bad at watching new movies. I'm definitely more of a type of person to watch things over and over and over that I have already watched before and I know that I enjoy it. Um, so it just took me a little bit but then one day recently I was just, again scrolling trying to find something to watch and I was like you know what I think today's the day I'm, I'm, I'm gonna watch the movie and it was very good. I kind of am a little bit upset that I didn't watch it a little bit sooner because I honestly think it's one of my favorites. Like I said, it, the writer and director who wrote and directed this, and directed this movie, um, he also wrote the script for The Orphanage, which is another movie that I really enjoyed. And although this one isn't in Spanish, like The Orphanage is it's in English. But yeah, I can definitely see some parallels between the two movies. I think if you definitely liked The Orphanage, I think you will like Marabone, um, they kind of have, they're not the same story by any means, uh, they have like the same vibe to them. They're very kind of moody, mysterious, uh, suspenseful. This movie is about a family who is kind of fleeing their past life from England and they're now living in America and they're trying to start anew. It's a family of five, four kids and a mother and when they get to America, you know, the mom is like, hey, once we cross this threshold, we are forgetting everything, all of our memories start now. And they all agree to it, and that's where the movie kind of starts. And unfortunately though, the mother becomes ill and she then passes away. And it is then thrust upon the oldest son, whose name is Jack, to kind of keep everything that, well, her passing a secret until he turns 21, so that way he is legally able to care for his siblings and the family won't get separated. And all the meanwhile, all this is going on, they are also being haunted by a mysterious force, I don't know, haunting ghost, I don't really know um, what they're being haunted, well, I mean, I do know, but I don't want to reveal it, but they are being haunted by something in their house. So they're kind of dealing with these two different things while they are, you know, trying to stay together and not let the outside world know that they their mother passed away. So, as I said, the movie definitely had a kind of mysterious, suspenseful atmosphere to it. I think it's definitely the way it was shot in, the, like, the cinematography, I guess. I think, like, the colors seemed like everything was very kind of dark and muted. And there was no, like, bright colors really anywhere. And, yeah, so I think that definitely contributed to that. And then, as well as, I don't know, the, the house itself, it was kind of interesting. Because I feel like when I first, you know, when we first... Are introduced to the house the house doesn't seem like it's very upscale or anything by any means but I didn't get the sense that it was falling apart and as the movie progresses I definitely felt as if the home that they were living in was no longer I don't know it seemed like it was like almost disintegrating slowly I feel like there was wallpaper that was kind of falling off of the walls the ceiling was coming undone you know there was holes all throughout the house and the walls and whatnot and so I felt like what kind of was once kind of nice and very hopeful, I guess, for their new life was kind of turning into something that maybe possibly wasn't something that they had initially were hoping for. And then it was also interesting to me because I felt like they weren't necessarily living in the house. I feel like they were trying to take up as little space as possible. I kind of got the sense that they weren't trying to enter certain rooms in the house and that they were only ever like in the kitchen or in like the living room type area and they just always stayed together. I don't think they had their own rooms that they kind of went off to. They were always just staying together. And then of course I think also just the way that they told the story made you kind of feel like you were in on their secret. You know, you think the whole entire time that the secret is the them trying to keep their mother's death 
uh, from the outside world. And I feel as the audience, you were thinking the whole time, hey, I'm in on the secret, this is what's going on, but at the same time, you didn't know the full story, you know? Obviously, there's parts where, like, where, what, what is this haunting that they're experiencing? Why are they being haunted? Why did they leave their home in England to come to America? Like, what's going on? They never really full-on explain any of that as well, but they almost make you feel like they did explain it. You, I don't know, like they let you in on a little bit, but they don't tell you the full stories, but you think that you know exactly what's going on. I'm hoping this is making sense. But yeah, you think you know what their secret is, and you kind of thinking that this is the story of that and of itself, like that's going to be the whole story. And you feel like you are getting a chance to kind of see them overcome this difficult thing and kind of see their struggles with that. I also really loved the way that this film makes you think you know exactly where it's heading, but then kind of twists that and reveals that there is, again, much more to the story than we, the audience, are actually getting to know. And not only that, I mean, this movie kind of had an emotional impact on me. I mean, I went into this thinking I was going to get a spooky ghost story type of movie, but it was much more than that. I feel like I kind of, I don't know, I became really emotional watching this movie and it like almost made me want to cry a little bit. And I don't know, I kind of felt like it was kind of showing you the breaking point of human spirit, I guess you can say, and like what it would take to get you to that point. And I don't know, it was just kind of a really sad story. Like it was really good, but it was also kind of really sad. And I felt for the characters and what they were going through. Um, obviously that's, I think, a mark of a good movie, but I don't know, it was just especially that like reveal at the end. It was like, oh my God, that like hurt my heart. And then also after look, I looked into this movie after I watched it, as I do to most of the movies that I watch. And I realized that a lot of what the director slash writer was saying about the film and the way that they kind of put little clues in there to kind of almost not reveal, but like, yeah, give little clues onto where the, what was going to be the reveal. At the end of the movie, I realized I did not pick up on like half as much as I thought I was going to pick up. And usually, I mean, usually because I do watch movies multiple times in a row, I feel like I'm more able to kind of see what was going on. But obviously this was my first time watching it and I didn't pick up on any of that. And now knowing what I know, I definitely want to watch this movie again. I think this is a movie that you could definitely watch multiple times and pick up on different things that you didn't pick up on the first time around. I know for a fact that I'm going to watch it again and I'm going to be looking out for some of the things that I saw that the writer himself said that they put in the film to kind of hint, hint at certain things and... Yeah, I thought it was just really cool and I think it adds a lot to the movie. So yeah, overall, I really enjoyed this movie. I think, again, if you are a fan of the orphanage and that type of style and story of a movie, I think you will definitely enjoy this one. Um, yeah, so I encourage everyone to watch it. I feel like it's kind of an underrated movie. I don't know. I don't know if it is, but I, I personally feel though it is because I had not heard of it. Not that I have heard of every single movie out there, but yeah, I feel like I hadn't heard of it and I feel like I didn't... I like didn't hear people talking about it at all and I think it deserves a lot more credit than it currently has and I think more people should definitely watch it so I definitely encourage you to go ahead and watch that but yeah that's it that's all I have for you today I hope you enjoyed this little review that I had and I hope you definitely check out Marrow and I think it's one that everyone who likes kind of dark haunting heartbreaking stories will enjoy and yeah I will see you guys in the next one bye